Today we're going to be talking about Kirinuki. Hey class, what's going on? Mr. G here. Today we're going over a new project, Lowly getting the beard back. So today's project, I scroll through Instagram as I do. This is really, really cool. Let me hit this art teacher up and like, hey, what, what, explain. Tell me more about this. Want to learn some more. So learn more about Kurinuki. So I came across this guy's Instagram page. So this teacher, Mr. Malia, teaches out of Little Elm High School. It's got listed as LEH Claire's. So hit him up on Instagram. I put the his uh, contact info down in the description below. Anyway, so I was going through the feed, saw his piece, and I was like, this is really cool. So I texted the guy. I was like, first off, one, love the piece. Two, can I make a video on this? And he's like, yeah, go, go for it. Absolutely. Love the videos. Let's go make this happen. First off, got this idea from him, not my idea. And I want to give full credit to him because it was just really cool. A little uh, history on Kiranuki. This pyro technique is relatively easy, but it requires much patience and effort like any other traditional clay arts. Whether you're new to the material or a skilled professional in pottery, it'll be an exciting challenge. Now, Kirinoki pottery is a traditional Japanese pottery art, which implies hand building and carving from a single block of clay. This tradition is perfect for sculpting, but it also ideally fits for, for functional wear crafting. Using the Kirinoki technique, you can create anything you need from a teacup to a vase, depending on how much time and effort you want to dedicate to this activity. So get ready to forget about the right clay forming and let yourself craft asymmetric and imprecise articles. Focus on the pleasure receiving from the fascinating process of making ceramics and creating vessels that will reflect your personality and creativity. Thus, a small cup can turn into a real masterpiece if you cover it with the right mix of several different glazes. Add to this bizarre form an unusual texture and you'll obtain a one-of-a-kind vessel. As mentioned above, Kirinuki is a traditional Japanese form of hand building. This tradition involves shaping a solid block of clay and carving out a vessel. The technique implies a more sculptural approach to clay forming, thus creating an excellent interior and exterior of the item. The key idea of Kirinuki pottery is to craft pottery spontaneously so that it looks alive. Now for this purpose, a ceramicist creates raw and sculptural vessels and, voids and avoids refined and smooth finishing. However, it doesn't mean that your pottery items need to be rough as there are many examples of cute and elegant kirinuki vases cups and other articles now when i saw this and i saw the process of them making it it really kind of just set in stone one of the things that i've done for the last couple ceramic videos so go back to the feed watch those too one of the things that i'm finding pretty necessary especially for students who are early in ceramics so this is a great early project for you guys is basic carving skills how do you carve into a block of clay now for this you're going to need some tools some knives my three main go-to pieces for this project was the traditional fettling knife. I have some dull kind of Whitland knives and a scraper. Metal, plastic, it's all kind of the same. Now, I'm a southern guy, so Whitland is uh, something that we've all done growing up. And for those that don't live in the South, what does that mean? That means you have a knife and you have a, you have a knife and you have a stick and you carve the stick. That's it, it's just traditional carving. I have traditional ones, ones that I've used, different walking canes. Uh, a walking cane in the South is kind of a, we're boys, we just made these things. I have some girls in a Girl Scout troop that they've also did the same thing. So I was in Boy Scouts, we carved things, we had pocket knives and we whittled and did stuff like that. And then I've also got cousins, so it's, it's anybody who wants to use a knife and carve. Basic knife rules apply when you're using these things. Even though this is a dull knife, this could cut you or injure you somewhat. So be careful, I have another video up here uh, for how to use knives safely, so just keep that in mind. But the whole process of this is you're just you're just carving into your clay vessel to create that shape, that form out of the overall piece. So took one of my students' pieces, looks like this. So lots of rough yet smooth edges to it. Um, you can see how the foot has been tapered out at the bottom. Nice carved out piece and nice hollowed out interior. All of this is done really well. For this piece, you want to, the basic goals that you're trying to do when you're carving one of these vessels is to make sure that you have a even consistency from the interior and the exterior so that the sidewall of your cup should be the same on both sides all the way around so that everything is even. That's the key, you want everything to be even. Now, when you're carving these, what I found that as, as I was building mine out, 
making the walls really thick to start with before you start hacking away at it because you don't want to hack a hole in your piece. I did it and I repaired it, patched it up. But the whole process of this, uh, of this task is to carve and to use your tools and learn how to carve properly out a piece of, out a piece of clay. for the glazing process. Now, as it said in the notes, you want to stack several layers of glaze on top of each other. Why? Because the more that you stack, the more that it blends those pieces together. For us, we're gonna be using an orange. Uh, it's kind of like a rusted orange. It looks kind of dirty. I, I, I'm big on the whole apocalyptic pottery kind of style. I like, I like that kind of rust element. It looks cool to me. For all the notches, all little spaces here, these little ledges, they're gonna cake that bad, they're gonna cake in those sections with some uh, beautiful blue. This one, that's what we're using. We're using a uh, Sapphire Blue 023 Amico brand. And, and then as these pieces are firing, that heavier glaze at the top is gonna start to sag towards the bottom. So do not paint all the way to the bottom with your piece. You wanna add a little bit of space just in case. I overpainted mine and I got parts that melted all the way down to the kiln shelf. Uh, so I will be going back to smooth these pieces up. I'll knock them. Got a finishing sponge that has a diamond grit on it. So it's actually gonna smooth these pieces out. I like doing that because it makes the pieces all nice, smooth and shiny without uh, me having to do a lot of work on the beforehand. All that stuff when I'm sanding it is underwater so that the dust breathe in death. No, it doesn't happen because it's underwater. So I'm not getting those particles in my face. Also, we're all wearing masks for safety and security. You can see the river of glaze that kind of flowed down that side. You can see that rusted color underneath and then those beautiful, beautiful strips of that sapphire blue that really kind of fell over the edge there and just gives that beautiful looking accent to the piece. It's kind of like a uh, Grand Canyon, mid water, mid rainstorm. Looks cool. I love it. Now for this project, uh, because these things go pretty quickly, if you have the amount of clay and the number of students, make two, make several pieces. Uh, for me, the projects that we're doing in my class, we're doing a cup and a vase. Not a, all right, so I, I know it's not a large vase. I, I already got that. Uh, again, you can see cascading blue structure here. We got that beautiful orange underneath that rock color and then the falling water going across the outside of those pieces. Just love it. Beautiful stuff. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make another one of these. Gotta get a massive boulder of clay and just start hacking away at it. But it was a lot of fun. A lot of cool stuff in there. A couple quick tips that I got from uh, Mr. Malia. Number one, if we're using a pug mill, don't just take the raw clay out of it. Take the clay out, wedge it up 
properly. You want to get any, because uh, even if it says it's de-aerating the clay, there's sometimes air pockets or stuff is in the clay. So make sure that you're slicing up, wedging it out properly, getting those those uh, that clay really compressed and let it kind of sit out for maybe a day or so. Lightly cover it with plastic. You want this stuff to be just about to leather hard quality because it just makes the structure a lot easier to do. Uh, you guys can see in the video what I did was I'm, I'm throwing the clay at the board at a diagonal angle, just coming down in a slantward like this. So I can kind of knock the clay back. It realigns the particles uh, is what most of us say when we're, when we're doing that. What we're doing is we're shocking the clay so it kind of stretches the shape also kind of forces the clay to kind of repack on itself so it's compi compounding uh the material back together it, it, it is a very helpful tip to use uh but again let it kind of harden up a little bit because you want that harder element so that you can carve uh a lot easier i've i found that carving bone dry is like a no-go leather hard is exceptionally good but just right before leather hard is like Oh, it's, it's the chef's kiss. Another fine tip here, carving tools are kind of a gray area in what we can use. Uh, you have your basic wire tools, these, these looking things. If you got a bunch of these, they work, that's great. If you want to use your wire to cut down the sides of it too, that also works. Just however you want to carve into it works. I've got a cheese grater. I love the cheese grater. Miss Melina said the same thing. If I keep saying Melina, I am so sorry, my friend, I'm trying. I watched Doc Ock on well, Spider-Man, so let's, I'm blaming Alpha Molina for this. The last two tips on here, don't forget to use metal tools to gouge and carve into it. You, you kind of want to push in and then pull pieces out, get that smooth cut in, and then when you pull it out, it gets a tear away effect. Those look really good. I did personally like a lot of those that I was doing uh, for that. It was the putty knife that gave me that effect the best, so that worked. Uh, also, don't forget this is a meditative process, or it becomes a meditative process. So while you guys are doing it, put on some nice, cool, calming music and just kind of have it as a hack and hack session. Don't turn it angry. Uh, make it fresh, make it fun, and it's a lot. It, it, it was a blast. I loved doing this project. My students enjoyed this project, uh, which is always <laughs> essential. And uh, uh, Mr. Molina's students also enjoyed the project too. He said that he, the, him and his kids were also having a blast, which was a lot of fun. All right, time to wrap up classes. We always do. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share all the various platforms. Get the message out there to as many teachers, friends, and students as we possibly can. Share the message. Always a good thing. And don't forget, if you guys had a question, comment, or concern during today's class, raise your hand in the comments below. I'm happy to answer the questions from my classmates. As always, I will be seeing you guys next class. Until then, more fun pottery. I'm going to go make another dozen of these. It was a lot of fun. Other than that, I'll catch you guys later. Later, guys.